All right, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we are here to, uh, at the site of the Ned Skelton Stadium to talk about the future of the rec center. Uh, I'm here with my fellow commissioners, uh, Tina Skelton Wozniak and Pete Gherkin. Uh, we are announcing that uh, this former home of the Toledo Mud Hens, which was the home from, I believe it was 1965 until 2002, will be demolished by the end of this year. Uh, the baseball fields inside the stadium will remain and continue to be the home of the Mid-American Men's Baseball League. The clubhouse and the old stadium will remain. After the demolition, the footprint of the stadium will, and the landscape will be maintained as part of the recreation center. Demolition will be completed so as to have as little impact on the existing facilities so that the groups that utilize this facility can continue to do so. That includes the Toledo Volleyball, Toledo handball, uh, quarter midget racers, and softball and baseball teams. For the future, we are undertaking a request for qualifications to obtain proposals for the best consulting firms to undertake a review of the recreation center to develop a comprehensive and optimal plan for the future use of this facility going forward. Lucas County is looking to the experts to determine the best use and program use for the Toledo, for the Lucas County Rec Center. The RFQ will be a top to bottom analysis of every aspect of the center and the building in the athletic fields, the courts, and whatever groups use it now and possible uses in the future. Historically, the rec center has been a recreational athletic complex and the RFQ will further identify what are the optimal uses for this. We are going to ask the experts to develop opportunities to increase the rec center and use and visibility that remains visible to our community. I'll now turn this over to Commissioner Wozniak. Thank you. Who actually has a similar name to, right. anyway. anyway that's <laughs> hey, this is a big deal. Um, we love the rec center. I think for so many of us, we have memories of um, swimming in the pool or going down the big giant slide or uh, playing softball or baseball. Um, and then certainly the, the great home of the Toledo Mud Hens until it had another great opportunity, which was to move downtown into a state-of-the-art facility. I actually remember that press conference when people would say, how do you think, um, like Ned Skelton would feel about moving downtown. I said Ned Skelton would have been thrilled to move downtown to have a great new state-of-the-art facility for the Toledo Mud Hunt. So um, this reminds me a little bit of that today because how do we feel about the grandstand and the bleachers coming down? I think we should all feel the very same way, that we're very, very excited about the um, pro uh, the opportunities of what we can do on this land for recreation moving forward. Um, currently, there are just a ton of users. Um, I always say it's in the thousands if you really put it, put the numbers together. We have baseball and softball, so take all those little leaguers and those uh, young adults that play baseball and, and, and softball, and then you add their family visits and the recreation time that they spend here. That's that's a. A big number. Take the Mamble um, Senior Meds League, and I know Mamble's represented here today, and a big shout out to Tim um, and the Mamble organization who have taken care of this field for years and years and years, and actually one of the real reasons why we kept having more and more interest in the rec center was the users, the, the people like Mamble. Um, and then you take the little uh, midget car racing program, which is a national program, and I don't know if they're here. I gotta get my list out and introduce all of you, but um, they, they've used this facility nationally and brought 
great um, hotel uses and people coming to the rec center to, uh, you know, to participate in that program. That's just been a, that's had, that's been here for years and years and years. Uh, then you just take the other opportunity, whether it's a walking track or whether it's 400 plus families that use the girls softball program. These are young women around our community that learn how to, our, our volleyball program and learn how to, how to, you know, excel their volleyball use and enjoyment and, and the families that come here for that, the fair, and we could go on and on. But there are thousands of people that use this for recreation. It may look like it needs an upgrade here, and in fact it does. But to the users, this is their recreational home. So we are very thoughtful through this RFQ process and through this demolition, how can we turn this into maybe our dreams of the past, but now our dreams of the future, and, and make sure that, that there is a place for all of these users to feel like they have continued support from all of us that want to meet their dreams for where you live part of what you do in terms of having quality of life in a community is what you get to do for your recreation. And so we have a real big responsibility here and we are taking that very seriously. Um, I'm very excited about the RFQ process. We have to bring in the experts that know how to do this work. We've had the thrill to talk with people like Joe Napoli about this. Um, he understands recreation in our community, knows many of the people that participate in recreation and he is willing to stick by and be um, an advisor to us on this program. Um, and we're grateful for those of you that have st stood by as the recreation, we didn't have the money to pay for all these recreational needs of our community, but the users stuck by and did their part to keep their programming strong. And so we really wanna thank them. So Tim Egan with Mamble, thank you so much. The, you guys are just terrific. Um, uh, is it Miller Farwig? Did I, somebody wrote that really fast. And so I want to make sure I know who you are, sir. Is that, did you write Miller Var? Somebody down here, if, if it's you, please give your name. Shane Warner from the Fair Board. Shane, thank you so much. Uh, Cody Kramer from the cars, the midget cars. Where, where are you, Corey? Right yeah, yeah, thank you so much. You guys are so fun. Um, Jim Lowe and Phil Kirk are Toledo handball. Um, and these guys have run an international handball, outdoor handball, and they have been users for, or the, the program has here, been here for 47 years. It's the biggest or the, the nicest, best facility, in the best facility in the country. And they come here from all around to play outdoor handball. Um, and so those are just a few. Who'd we miss here? Sir? Tim, 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 I haven't seen you for a while. Mike, and you're with, with, okay, with Toledo Volleyball. Mike, thank you so much. Okay, and with the fair board. And then our gentleman here on the handball court. So um, lots of good, exciting things to come. Um, thank you to the past users, the current users, and we look forward to taking care of the users of the future that um, will grow and have memories here just like the rest of us. So. Turn it over to Pete. Sure. Uh, thank you. A very important day here for the history of the Rex Center. I think we're at a crossroads. We're, we're, we're starting at a crossroads to maybe a new journey. Um, some of us here know the glory days of the past. And Tina, uh, we'll take some ageism here. And Gary, I remember the high dive. And they were, those are great memories for generations of people in our community. Let's go to the Rex Center. Unfortunately, that gener there's a whole generation between ours and where we're at today that didn't see the Rec Center uh, that way. And it's, this, op this property is, is, is both a challenge and an opportunity. Um, for the last couple of years, it's been a challenge. Mm -hmm. COVID didn't help. Um, uh, management structures have changed. And, and I think uh, we, look past to, we look to the glory of the past and, and kind of the uh, uh, status quo of the present. And where we're at today is now we're looking to the future. Uh, one part of it is taking uh, the, the stadium down. That'll be bittersweet for everybody. Anytime you, uh, you know, history moves on past a, a building, people reflect on that. But what's the future? So I, as much as the announcement of the demolition of the stadium is, is important today, as we've all said that this uh, engagement of this RFQ process and getting another set of eyes on what this property. There are no, there's no other county, I think, in, in Ohio that has, owns about a 70 to 90 uh, acre piece in the middle of a city 
um, in, in the city of Maumee, and that's yeah. what we've had here. <coughs> and there's been debate about what's the future. Is it housing? Is it recreation? Is it mixed? Is it both? Is it everything? Well, when you got a site this size, um, many needs can, can be accomplished. Many needs can be met. Um, and that's why I think this RFQ process will give us some direction to the future. The past, it was great. The memories are there. But those have been lost to a generation, and we know we want to do better than what it is today, and that's why we're here. We, we want the future to look better than the present, and, and everybody's committed to do that. Let me talk just a quick second about the RFQ process. We've done this before. This is a tried and true method for us. Uh, before we built the Huntington Center, um, in, in, in just in the mid-2000s, which doesn't seem that far ago, but it is, uh, we engaged in a feasibility study on the Huntington Center to say, if we move a multi, if we build a multi-sports complex somewhere, will it work? What size should it be? Who should it engage? And and that study came out pretty well. I think the Huntington Center met all the promises that the feasibility study gave us. We did the same thing recently with the uh, uh, renovation of the uh, convention center in the hotel. Well, we engage uh, professional uh, uh, eyes to come and say, look, it'll work. We didn't know if it'll work or not. They said yes, it'll work, but here's what you have to do to make it work. We're going to do the same process here. We will get an expert company to come in and say, what works there? It's a big site, as I said. Many things can work here. Uh, and we want to open up uh, for our, for our uh, residents in Maumee to have something they can be proud of when they drive by, for an opportunity for all the residents of Lucas County, and to bring people in from far and near to help spend money here. So demolition, we'll, we'll get through that. The future is with this RFQ and the decision this board's going to make in the future. Just the one thing I, I wanted to point out, I never jumped off the top of the, hot, the, <laughs> the diving board, high diving board, so I'm um, throwing that out there now. I also wanted to acknowledge our friends from Maumee, Patrick Birch, Andy Glenn, thanks for joining us this morning. It's good to see you. And yeah. Jessica Ford and Matt Hireman and um, Megan Vahikasiri for your leadership to help us get to this point. It's something we've wanted for a long time, so thank you. Any right. questions we can answer? Well, obviously, uh, we will take everyone's opinion. Uh, that's why we're ha having an expert uh, involved in this. Uh, we should probably have that determination as to who will be have the request for qualifications by mid-March. Um, I would expect that, uh, obviously, city administration uh, will be part of that uh, process, as well as uh, the neighbors and residents of Maumee, of, of which, obviously, I'm one of them. Uh, and this is important for our entire community, and so this will be a top-to-bottom comprehensive analysis. Obviously, there are certain uh, things that have uh, that I involve uh, certain funds that have been received by the rec center in the past uh, that create certain uh, barriers. But w we will do a complete analysis on that entire funding stream and the analysis of the entire facility as a whole. Could you please give us a timeline, approximate timeline? When are you going to start the feasibility yeah. study? Uh, how long will it get to take? Uh, when do you think the work will begin? The construction will begin, and when the new center will be open? I'd like to um, answer that. I think the feasibility uh, study can begin immediately, but the actual demolition can't occur till after fall because we have ball games all throughout the season. So probably if around November, or if not late October, November next year. We'll start the demolition. I mean, we expect to pass the resolution sorry, today, today, yeah, we're doing it today, and we would probably get proposals usually <laughs> about a month, and then I would expect the analysis will begin sometime in June and conclude before the end of the year. But we won't interrupt the bug. Uh, when do you think the construction will start? Don't know. Well, we, the RFQ process will lay out the set of proposals and opportunities. Are we talking months, years from now? No, we, th we think the demolition, is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah the demolition year. will be done this year, we expect. After the fourth. And right. the whole process to build the new facility, when will we see we whatever the future We don't know yet. Out. That's what the feasibility study uh, will tell us. So it may be years, right? It, it will be in its own time. Well, in the meantime, the users are still going full boat ahead. In its own so time. the users are not going to get interrupted at this point, and they don't want to be interrupted. <coughs> so that's why... 
Is there a consensus on that? All right. Okay. All right. Hey, I'd like to go back to your question because that's an important question. And I want to go back to what we've done in the past. When we did the Huntington Center, when we did the Convention Center, to use the same process, we had extensive engagement both with the city of yes. Plato, the yes. business community, the hotel community. We'll, we'll do the same thing. I have friends that live right across the street there on center line. There's as much interest in what goes on here as the administration of, of Mayor Carr and, and the coming administration. We have a track record of proving that we can engage the community. We do it really well. And, and that's a priority. So if past is prologue to the future, we have a track record of doing that. There's no reason that we wouldn't want a relationship with the city of Maumee in this process. So, to be cl so the grandstands will be up for another spring and summer, correct? Yeah, I mean, because essentially. Be because safety has been a big issue there. Right, it's so is there any concern of having them up for another Where's spring and summer? Where's our facility? Yeah, there, it's been completely no. maintained for safety. And people do not use those seats. But, but they're at this not time. safe right now, right? Well, they're, but they're secure and safe. Sean, they've been up for several years. We haven't had they're an accident. We have a pretty good uh, uh, perimeter security on it. There's, there, we've been successful in it. What happened? We, I'm sure we can maintain that track record of safety and security. We have processes in place Nobody to keep the public away from it. So it, it I mean. I mean, we'll I, wouldn't, get it. I wouldn't utilize it right now if I were you and I head over there. I, you know, that's not safe, but it's safe when it's secured. And, it's secured. and that's what we've done. We've secured, and uh, this is a process that will continue over the next year. Now, now the, the, the RFQ, the request, is it going to be from end to end? Yeah. Is it going to look from, from the fair area all the way down? The whole yeah, 70 yeah. acres. The comprehensive plan. And if, and if the request comes back and says, hey, recreation doesn't work here, you need to come up with you know, something else, whether it be housing or anything like that. Are you okay if the, if the end up result ends up moving oh. away from recreation here? Well, I'm not going to hypothesize what the RFQ is going right. to say because that's why we're doing it, okay? So once we get that information, then the three of us will, will evaluate that and we will make a determination as to how we're going to proceed and uh, we will pass a resolution uh, and, and it's a process that we've done before, as Pete pointed out, and that we will utilize that same process here. But, I mean, I support... The, the mere notion that thousands and thousands of people use this facility for recreation today lends my thinking to want to know if recreation can continue as a high priority. I, I think it's important that we consider recreation on the site to be something that continues. I mean, we've already had uh, preliminary development proposals shopped to us in the years that shows both housing and recreation. It's a big site. Recreation is important to the community, uh, important to the commissioners, housing and development also. So I, I think we've seen, look, the report will take us where it's going to take us. I think, there, I think there's gaps in recreation in Lucas County. I think we have to be very open to what else can be programmed here for recreation. I, I'm open to that now. And quality of life. I mean, recreation yeah. in a community is so essential to the quality of life of the entire community. And this is a big piece of that. I think you can hear just for the three of us, there's lots of debate on this that can go forward, but that's a good thing. And yeah. I hope a lot of people weigh in and be a, and, and can sure. weigh in on what they want in their county, particularly when it comes to recreation at this point. So Thank you. All right. It's a fun, one, one. fun project. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Stay warm. Thank you. Yeah, those are the days.